So let's look at this question on how to find the equation of the tangent and normal to a curve. All right. So here's a sample problem. Now, when it comes to finding the equation of the tangent and normal to a curve, note that it's a four-step process. Your first step has to do with getting the slope or the gradient of the tangent. Your second step now becomes finding the equation of the tangent. The third step becomes finding the gradient or slope of the normal. And then the fourth one finally will now be finding the equation of the normal. So let's take it step by step and see how we do this. Step one, let's get the slope or the gradient of the tangent. Now, how do we do that? We're given the function x cubed plus x squared y plus y cubed minus 7. It's equal to 0. Our first tax here would be to differentiate this. Now, on differentiating, what you have here is an implicit function, right? I've already taught the concept of implicit differentiation in our previous class. So if you missed it, please check our previous lesson on implicit differentiation. All right, but I'll take it step by step. So when it comes to x cubed, if I differentiate x cubed, what do I get there? It will give you 3x squared, okay? Plus, now a term like this, how do you differentiate this? The concept is simple. Your first tax is to differentiate x squared. If I differentiate x squared, you have 2x. Use 2x to multiply this y here. It gives you 2x times y gives you 2xy. So I'm having plus 2xy plus this same term here come to differentiate y. Now we know that if you have x, if y is equal to x, we know that the y over the x is equal to 1. In the same concept, if I differentiate y, so I'm saying that if I differentiate x, I would have 1 as my answer. The same thing happens if I differentiate y, I would have 1 also as my answer. It works with the same concept. So hence, in this case here, if I differentiate y, I will have 1 as my answer. I will use 1 to multiply x squared. So 1 times x squared gives you x squared. Now, the only thing here is that you attach dy over dx. And the reason why I am attaching dy over dx here is because I just differentiated the y. So this is how implicit function works. Where you differentiate an x here and you got 3x squared, you just proceed to solve the next one. All right. Also, when you, differentiated, when, when you differentiated x squared here, you had 2x. So 2x times y gave us 2xy. And we proceeded, that, that's this one here, 2xy. And we proceeded to solve the, the next one here. But whenever you differentiate a y, you add the y over dx. That's the concept. So plus, come here, I'm having y cubed. Differentiate y cubed, you have 3y squared. Now, I'm having 3y squared there. There's no, no other term to multiply with. There's no other term to multiply it with, so it becomes 3y squared. Now, since I am differentiating a y, I will attach what there? dy dx. That's the concept. So that's it. Okay, so I'm having minus. So it becomes minus. Differentiate 7 the constant. It gives you 0 is equal to 0. If I differentiate 0, I have 0. So I have this. All right, so with this now, my next tax would be, um, okay, yeah, my next task would be all the terms that have dy over dx, I'll leave them at the left hand side of the equation. All the terms without dy over dx, I'll take them to the right hand side of the equation. This term has dy over dx, so it becomes x squared dy over dx plus this term has dy over dx, it becomes 3y squared dy dx. Okay, so I'm done with that. That's literally all the terms that have the y dx. Next up, this one here does not have the y over dx. So I'll move it over. So if it crosses the equality sign to the right hand side, it becomes a negative. That becomes minus 3x squared. This one also plus 2xy crosses the equality sign. It becomes minus 2xy. Okay, so zeros are off. All right, so I have this as my next work there my next task will now be factorize the y over the x on the left hand part of the equation so for this term here x squared dy over dx if i cancel dy over dx notice that i'm left with just x squared so it becomes x squared here plus same thing here if i take out dy over dx i'm left with just 3y squared so plus 3y squared you have this and this will be equal to on the right hand side, I have minus 
x squared minus 2xy. All right, so you have this. So at this point now, I want to get the value of the y over the x, and that will mean I will divide here by, and also divide here, here too, by everything attached to the y over the x. So I'll divide here by x squared plus 3y squared. Divide here by x squared plus 3y squared. At this point now, this will cancel this. So I'll now have that dy dx is equal to minus 3x squared minus 2xy all divided by x squared plus 3y squared. Now what we have here is actually the slope the slope or the gradient of the tangents. Please notice that whatever we get here is the slope or the gradient of the tangent. Okay. All right. So for us to get a value here, we'll go back to the coordinates. We're given a coordinate in the question. If you go back to the coordinates here, that's um, this one here, you have 2, 3. So at 2, 3, at 2, 3, what do you have there? would have that dy over dx. So you have that dy over dx. Let's get, let's get a value for this. Wherever I see x, I'll put 2. So from here, of course, this is equal to x, y. That means x is this value here. That means x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3. That's all. all right. So 2, this is x, this is y. So I'm having minus 3 into x squared. That becomes 2 squared minus 2 into x that's 2 that's from here into y that's y is um 3 okay into 3 all divided by so this all divided by denominator you have here x squared x is 2 so it becomes 2 squared plus 3 into y squared y is 3 so it becomes 3 squared let's get value here this is equal to um, I'll just go straight to punching everything on the numerator. So if I punch everything on the numerator, I'm having minus 3 times 2 squared minus 2 into 2 times 3. What I have there will be minus 24. That should be your numerator all over. For denominator, you have 2 squared plus um, 3 squared times 3. And that gives you 31. So you have this as your slope of the tangent. Okay. So I'll just go, I'll just proceed to cross check this before we proceed. Um, all right. So I'll check. This is the correct answer. What you have here, as we said, is the slope of the tangent. Slope of tangent. So we've gotten the first part, which is to get the slope of the tangent. Next up is to get the equation of the tangent. Now, for equation of the tangent, for equation, equation of the tangent, record that the straight line equation is given by y is equal to mx plus c. Now, a much better form would be y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1 plus c this is like a much more or a more broader form all right in this case here there is no intercept so that means i will take off the c so note that in this case here there's no intercept so they'll take off the c here so what do we do next here um for this case here you take y so it becomes y minus recall that the coordinate given was two three this was the given coordinate. That means in this case here, which is this one here, we took we took um, x as 2 and y as 3. But in this case, this 2 and 3 becomes x1 and y1. So I'm saying this is x1 and this is y1. So if I say y minus y1, it becomes y minus 3. That same coordinate is equal to m, which is the slope of the tangent, which is minus 24 minus 24 over 31 that's m into x minus x1 here is 2 
so two. So I have this. All right, let's cross multiply. If I cross multiply here, thirty one multiplies all of this. That becomes thirty one into y minus three is equal to. I'm left with minus twenty four multiplying this minus twenty four into x minus two. Let's try to expand this. What do you have? This is equal to, or this would give you. 31 times y gives you 31y minus 31 times minus 3 gives you minus um, 93 is equal to so this is equal to let's see what we have here minus 24 times x gives you minus 24x okay minus times minus is plus so I'm having plus 24 times 2 is 48. So you have this. All right, let's proceed to simplify this much more further. This will be equal to, or this will give you 31y. I'll move this one over here. Um, okay. And that's equal to minus 24x plus 48. Minus 93 comes over, becomes plus 93. Proceeding further, this will give you 31y, it's equal to minus 24x, let's see 48 plus 93, our result gives us 141, so plus 141. Alright, so at this point, we've almost, we're almost done, our final tax will be divide this by 31, divide this by 31, divide this by 31. So I'll have that this will cancel this in essence y is equal to minus 24 all over 31x plus 141 all over 31. My usual advice would be take the positive before the negative. And by that I mean if I rearrange this, if I rearrange this, I'll have that y is equal to now since the first term here is negative, right? I'll take the positive term first which gives you this one here, which is 141 all over 31. Then bring in the negative, which is minus 24 over 31, minus 24 all over 31x. This becomes the equation of the tangent. So we've gotten the gradient of the tangent and the equation of the tangent. So this is the required equation of the tangent. Let's now get the equation of the normal. Now. When it comes to getting the equation of the normal, our first task would be to focus on the gradient of the tangent. We got the gradient of the tangent here as minus 24 over 31. We'll use this. So note that for this, note that the gradient or slope of the normal, slope of normal is equal to minus 1 all over slope of tangent. So slope of tangent. Now, if this is true, it means that the slope of the normal is equal to minus 1 all over. Uh, we got minus 24 all over 31. I think we had this. Let me confirm that. Yes, so we, yeah, so we had that. So this would be equal to, of course, if I'm taking negative inverse, it means this becomes, of course, negative cancels negative. If I take the inverse, I'll just have to flip this one here upside down, which becomes 31 over 24. So what I have here becomes the slope of the normal. So that's just all. So slope of the normal is just simply the negative inverse of the one of tangent. All right, so from here, let's now get the equation of the normal. So let's get equation of normal. For equation of normal, equation of normal now i'll still do the same thing which is y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1 using the same interval of 2 and 3 where this is x1 this is y1 let's fix in our values so i'm having y minus y1 so you can see here is 3 so minus 3 is equal to m m is the gradient of the no of the normal which is 31 over 24 31 over 24 into x minus what's x1 
x1 here is 2 so minus 2 all right so we solve this and simplify that becomes our final answer now for this 24 comes here it multiplies with this one here that becomes 24 multiplying y minus 3 is equal to 31 multiplies this that becomes 31 into x minus 2 let's expand brackets if you expand brackets 24 times y gives you 24y minus 24 times 3 i'm having 24 that gives you 72 so minus 72 it's equal to 31 times x is 31x 31 times minus 2 gives you minus 62 so i have this all right let's collect like terms this becomes 24y it's equal to 31x minus 62 i'm moving this one here over to the right hand side from negative it becomes positive 72 and if i work on this i'll have that i'm having this as 24y is equal to 31x so i'm just going to punch minus 62 plus 72 that should give you a plus 10 all right my final tax is to divide 2 by 24 all right to so divide this by 24 divide this by 24 divide this by 24 from here this cancels this it means that y is equal to 31 over 24 x plus this might the lowest term 2 here gives you 5 2 here gives you about 12 so that becomes 5 over 12 this becomes the equation of the normal so with this we've gotten the equation of the tangent and the normal to the curve at the point two and three all right so if you enjoyed this video please make sure you hit the like button all right like this video all right also leave a comment all right tell us if you enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe to this channel if it's your first time here all right and finally share this video to your friends so that they can also learn don't forget to also visit my website www.jonahimano.com forward slash courses there you can check the books or the courses section so you can see the available books and courses. Thank you and see you in the next class.